Hello nerds and welcome to Gemonism Total Nerdery Channel. We're back in From the Depth, we're going to look at cram cannons, because someone recently made a few cram cannon tutorials. However, they are now kind of obsolete because we have an update. I'm of course in dev test, but maybe when you're watching this it's already out in stable. So let us go into it how to make all kind of types of crams here. One thing you'll notice straight away is that all your old, old cram cannons are working perfectly fine. The only big difference is if they shoot uh, kind of fast before, they will shoot slow now, and the uh, gouge of the guns are probably a little bit bigger. Like here we have my Golem turret. It's now apparently 2000 millimeter, and we have a little bit longer reload time of one and a half minute. <laughs> Let's see if it creates a little bigger boom now. <laughs> yes, this tiny cannon uh, does create a bigger boom now. Of course, that's only pure explosive, so it would be even more efficient if it wasn't uh, only explosive. Anyways, uh, that's kind of our little thing here, and we should check out how to make the new cram cannons. Alright, so cram cannons were a little bit too good to be true. They were very cheap and took very little ammo. So, uh, in terms of balance, they are now a little bit more expensive, but they also take a little bit more of ammo. But they are still comparatively cheap and uh, kind of nice in maintenance. And they, of course, are still our big boom cannons. However, the shell speed of them are now 200 meters per second as default for all cannons, so they are a lot quicker than they used to be. Anyways, let us check at the cram cannon menu. Here if you uh, find the firing piece, this is kind of what shoots. So we should uh, create a little setup for a cram cannon. And we will start with just making a fixed load cannon here. So, um, here we have six-way connectors. These you kind of need to uh, connect all the good stuff up to your cannon. And we can put a firing piece on top of this. And we can click G to point it in the correct direction. All right. So now we have a nice little framework to work with our cannon here. Now we have different types of barrels have. And we have heavy barrels. We have normal barrels, you can see here, if we add some normal barrels, you can see that the shell speed is still the same. So it doesn't really matter how many barrels you have in terms of shell speed. The only thing that matters is um, rotation speed, of course. It will decrease if you have more barrels that are regular barrels, and your accuracy increases the longer the barrel are. Um, if you want to have some recoil suppression, you can have this one, recoil suppression barrel. And that thing, actually, if you have a lot of these, you actually will decrease the shell speed a lot, which is not a good thing. But well, um, if you want to make a slower firing cannon, like a mortar or something, then you might actually need to have some um, recoil suppression barrels, because if you have mortars at 200 meters per second, uh, they will go out a little bit into the atmosphere if you're shooting a very high arc, uh, which you will be doing if you are using a kind of medium close combat mortar. I don't know why you would, but anyways. To make the barrel move around, you can have this motor driven barrel. Now you can see that the rotation speed is basically three um, degrees per second, I believe that is, so you can see here. But the thing is, we can still move it around in 35 times 35 degrees. So you can still move it around and if you add motor driven barrels, the angles you can move it around doesn't change. The only thing that change is, it, is the rotation speed, so you can move it around faster. There is this type of barrel that's called heavy barrel, and the heavy barrel is kind of uh, very much more sturdy. But the more of them you add, 
the slower your cannon will be to turn around. So, it can be a very good idea to have at least uh, one heavy barrel in the start of your cram cannon. This means that this will kind of never get destroyed, or very not very easily get destroyed, and you will still have kind of a minimum barrel. Of course, it won't be the best, but you know, you will still have at least one barrel. Now, if we would like to change some angles here and make it move in wider angles, well, thing is, we can't really make it to move around in more than 35 times 35. We can, however, add an elevation barrel anywhere here. And that, uh, you can see here now, the azimuth is 25 degrees and the elevation is 45. We can add another one, and now it's elevation 55 and azimuth 15. God damn it. Come on. No. Thank you. Uh, and here we have uh, elevation 65, azimuth 5. So you can basically... Whoops, whoops. I'm clicking the wrong button here. You can like... Uh, the effect now stacks. That's the thing. Before it didn't stack, now it does stack. So now we have elevation of 20, uh, 75 and the azimuth of 5. If we add some rotational barrels, we will not increase the elevation or azimuth, but only uh, increase the rotational speed. So that's kind of a neat little thing. That's how it works now. So 75 is the max uh, degree you can make a cram cannon or uh, arc up, you know, uh, without having... Uh, but up, up, like rotation, uh, third blocks, vertical as well, of course. Yeah. Anyways, uh, then we of course have the flash suppression barrel, and if you have one of these, you can have more, but you'll not get any of the good effects, more of the good effects if you have more. But if you have one of these, um, the Sh uh, the shots you fire will be harder to detect. If enemies have kind of munition detection systems and lamps to take out the cram shells, uh, I think it will be, I think it was 20%, it will be reduced to um, that amount. So it will be much harder for the enemy to shoot it down. It does, however, slow down the shell a little bit. So that's it, that's how it works. Anyways, we'll set up a kind of basic barrel like this because we're going to look at the next part. And this is gauge increasers. You can see this cram cannon is pretty fat, thousand millimeters per second. No, god damn it! What am I saying? <laughs> it's why per second? It's uh, well, it's one thousand millimeters. Um, this one, so it's a pretty big shell. If we add these guys, gauge increasers, we can make it even larger. And if we have uh, 20 of these, we can get to the cannon's max shell, or max, yeah, max gauge. Anyways, um, in the cram cannon, we have some different settings here. Required accuracy before fire. If you want to make your cram cannon more accurate, you can turn it down to max accuracy. If, however, if you have a ship that's shaking around a lot and, you know, rolling and shaking and you don't really know what it's doing, it will try to get this perfect shot, you know. It will really try to get this perfect shot. But very often, it won't be able to get this perfect shot. So, if you want your cannon to fire, like at all, you might want to set it up a little bit um, you know, so it at least fires and hits sometimes. Um, but if you have a really stable ship, you know, you can kind of count that this thing will be able to be stable. Maybe you have some, um, you maybe you have some roll and pitch control. I have a tutorial on how to do that. You're a little bit stable, then it's a good idea to have it on max accuracy or perhaps a little bit unaccurate. It depends. We're kind of going close distance here, so I'm going to set it as a little bit semi-accurate, just because I want to, if we're going to shoot something, yeah. Anyways, um, here on the cram settings, we have some different things. We can go through on this uh, later. You can also set the gauge here. 
Of course it's usually set to max because bigger cramshell the better usually but you can set it down and right now the minimum gauge is 1000 which is the default gauge if you don't have any pellets if you don't have any uh, gauges going on. Anyways um, we'll shake a little bit into that later but now we are going to look at the one thing which we may otherwise forget. To control your cram cannon, you need to have a local weapon controller uh, behind, like one block behind, or like one block between behind, you know, a little bit kind of close to the firing piece. We'll have it here so it doesn't interfere. You want to throw up a failsafe? Throw, throw. Hmm. You want to put a failsafe. On your local weapon controller so it won't uh, fire itself if you don't have this it might fire on your vehicle you know it might disregard your vehicle and shoot at you as well so um, let's put a little receiver here and now we're connected up to mainframe we already have an AI on this thing on the local weapon controller of course we can set up some limitations here so maybe you know this cannon can't fire longer than 3,000 meters you can set it here uh, but that's, you know, some limitations, just so you know. Take a look at them. Right, so now let's go to the bulk of the Cram Cannon tutorial. Now we've gone through some of the basics here, and now we're going to go to the packers and payload compactors and pellets and good stuff like that. So, okay, think of a Cram Cannon as a bucket launcher. Think, af think about the cram shell as a bucket. And the bigger the shell is, the higher the gauge is, the wider the bucket is. The bucket, they contain pellets. And pellets, they are different types, they are explosive pellets that kind of makes a big boom, they are frag pellets that fires away a lot of big fragment, small fragmentation things and like uh, 120 degrees of angle. We have EMP pellets that kind of charge your enemy ships with a little EMP surge to fry some AI stuff. And you have harder pellets that help you with penetration. Right, so uh, technically you can kind of put this, uh, I believe you still can. No, um, you can't put pellets on uh, the, um, directly on uh, connectors anymore. You could before, you can't anymore it seems. So now we actually need to have the Packers. The packers weren't necessary before, but they were essentially necessary because your yeah, your cram cannon would be so much kind of shit if you didn't have them. So it's it's as for the better that you kind of have to have them. Now the packers are the only thing that will put your pellets and put it into the bucket that is your cram uh, shell. Uh, so the more packers you have the faster you will, able, you will be able to fill the bucket. Before the bucket is filled, your cram shell, the bucket, won't fly away. So, the more packers you have, the faster firing rate you will have. There is this uh, automatic orientation packer. Um, it's kind of a little bit useless, so I suggest just go with a manual orientation packer and just learn it. It's a little bit hard to get its angle, but you get a hang of it. So basically, think of this. The more packers you have, the faster you will be able to uh, fill the bucket, which is the cram shell. And uh, of course, the nice thing with the uh, packers is that they can share pellet containers. So, you can see here, now we set it up so these two kind of share the same pellet. And this is real nice, because the the packers, payload, like, all the components are kind of cheap. 
you don't need to worry about the cost very much except the pellets 150 oh my god we're ruined frag pellets 150 EMP pellets and you have you got this like mini discount on hardener pellets very nice but uh, basically that's that's how it goes you know so uh, that's why we want to connect them to as many packers as possible each pellet should be connected to four packers if possible now on this little th tutorial thing here we'll basically just uh, do it a little bit easier for us but yeah so now you can see the reload time is 15 seconds if we add more of these like that and like that our cram firing piece it now fires a uh, 10 seconds reload time fantastic so now we can fire a little thing here beautiful 10 seconds reload time how fantastic anyways um, let us check the reload time here we're just gonna remove those on the sides there because the thing is if you only have explosive it you know you don't have the most powerful shell because it will explode but it might not you know you want it to go a little bit into your enemy ship before it explodes and this is why pure explosive is sometimes a good idea but often it's a good idea to combine it with hardened pellets um, EMP however you can use kind of yeah you wanna but yeah, you can release the EMP surge inside enemy vehicles, but it's not much more efficient than uh, releasing it on the surface of it, since you can take out some some of those detection stuff. Anyways, um, what we want here when we're using explosive or anything like that, and usually we want, is to have a fusing box. A fusing box does take a little bit space in your bucket, so there will be less pellets available to get stuck in the bucket. Uh, but on the other hand, it will make the shell a lot more efficient. So even though it will be a little bit less powerful, um, it will be much more efficient. We can add several things here. Penetration depth is never wrong. So it will just penetrate a little bit before exploding. If we check, on a cr uh, if we check here on this, we can see it's kinetic damage and explosive damage. So we can even see the armor piercing value, which is uh, now 16 for this cannon. Pretty nice. Oh, well, anyways, let's, uh, let's just uh, go through some more things here while we're on it. We have a la laser targeter. A laser targeter can be anywhere on the cannon. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to actually see your enemy, like physically. And it's a little bit fun. We can set it as an offset time like this, so it explodes a little bit after. Then we go to the fuse here, and we are going to set... Um, we're gonna set it to explode on... Hmm, time from launch. Uh, so uh, I think this will be so that it explodes kind of uh, close to your target. Which is very good for like, uh, it's good all around actually, but it's especially good if you're trying to hit air targets. You can make a big frag uh, and explosive shell explode in the air kind of close to enemy ships and something like that. Uh, anyways, if you're using, you can have several like, uh, you can have all, the, all of these if you want. But uh, here we see, the, for this particular gauge the shell uh, health is reduced to 70% I think maybe the shell health is now only the thing reduced by the fuses okay so that's the thing that changed too anyways the more of these you have the weaker your shell will be um, so you only use one of them is kind of my general recommendation anyways uh, if you use a pure explosive shell I'd always go with inertial uh, so when it's starting to bounce on something it will just explode very nice Anyways, we're going to have time uh, from launcher, which means if we have a target, it will explode um, close to it. There we go. And here we can see it fired and it exploded in the air here. So we're just going to turn you off. 
when a cram shell is loaded, it seems to be a little bit exploded. Um, so our, our, our little cannon kind of blew up a little bit here. But, uh, oh well, that happens. Why you need to protect your cram cannons as any other cannon, of course. Anyways, you saw the effect with the laser targeter and the time fuse. It kind of blew up over the ship because the time fuse were then set to uh, explode the fuse close to target. It requires an AI, of course, to uh, time that, I believe. Anyways, we should kind of move on a little bit. Um, there was only one more point I wanted to make with the pa pa payload compactors, of course. And uh, let's just... Uh, get this down here a little bit. If we have a little cram cannon here, say with some connectors and some autoloaders like this. Right. So the bucket width is, this, uh, is decided of uh, kind of how, how big the shell is, which means how many gauge increasers we have. If we have like 20 of them, we'll get up to max gauge, which is pretty beautiful. But if we want the bucket to be deeper, 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 then we take these payload compactors and add them to, of course, these, the packers. If the compactors are also added to the packers, the size of the bucket, like the uh, like the volume of the bucket increases, and since and since the gauge increased the width, I imagine to think it uh, increases the length of the bucket, which is the cram shell. If you've forgotten that, and this is kind of cool because now you can see that we have one hundred and fifty of five hundred packet. So the reload time is 171 seconds. Pretty insane. Okay, so if we remove this, the reload time is now 149. God, that's not much better. But you can see that uh, the max packing rate, uh, the max packing size is like 400 and uh, yes, 400 something. And now, whoops, why did I add these? And now when we add these, we can go up to over 500. So that's kind of the little thing here. If you add these, the bucket will be deeper, but it will also take longer time to fill it up. So it might be super powerful and super slow shooting, but you might want the damn cannon to at least fire a bucket, even though the bucket is not filled, you want it to shug out some shells anyways, since it might be good that it has the potential to have real powerful, real powerful shells. But you also want it to actually fire. And to fix this, you go into the firing piece, you go to the cram settings, and here we have minimum packing 100%, cannon won't fire until it reached this percentage of the maximum capacity. We set this down to like something stupidly low, minimum. 5%. Now, the cram cannon will also fire at least, if it's at least 5% of the pellets that you can fit in this little bucket, it will shug it away. Automatic pack refit, you can kind of balance out some kind of balance things here between the different types of pellets if you have several. This should be set up automatic, however, so I wouldn't touch this too much. It's probably as best as it is, you can't change, you can't make it better, really. Anyways, uh, we're kind of almost reloaded now, but we're 400 of like 500, so uh, it will fire anyways. And of course, this shell is pretty powerful. Explosive damage, 7,000 almost. But uh, we have made this a fast firing gun, of course. Uh, we're still packing, but we're soon, soon we're gonna reach 5%. And of course, this explosive damage is only 10. It's like 610, so it's like not even 10% of the earlier shell. So that's kind of cool. Um, so basically, payload compactors, if you're going to use them, you probably want to set it so it won't fire at 100%, uh, but a little bit earlier. But it's a really good thing to add 
for like super slow cram cannons, which are kind of not firing very often. And an example of a cram cannon that's not firing very often, but it's a good idea to have these payload compactors. That is, of course, a cram bomber. So if you remove your barrel and you instead just uh, go in and put a bomb chute there. Now this thing, you can't add any more barrels on this. Like this is this is it. It's a small little thing that kind of releases a shell to be dropped from above. And well, this is basically how to make a cram bomb. Um, you know, we're closing in on target. Oh no, it's stupid, it's turning away. Oh, we're going down to the target. Oh no, we're going away. Are you finally going to attack or are you just going to circle this thing? If we pause the game, you can see four bomb shoots under the plane here. So that's kind of nice, but uh, from what I oh, oh, what I know, maybe um, something just broke. Who knows? Okay, now it looks like we're going in for a proper bomb run. There we go. Four of these shells coming down there, and uh, well, they're doing a lot of damage. Beautiful. So that's a bomb shoot. Anyways, let us make a combo cram cannon turret, just because why not? So, we're going to go and go to new objects, wherever you are. Sub objects, move. there we are. And we're going to select this 5x5 five five huge turret thing. So we're gonna make a real big turret here, just for tutorial purposes. And uh, everyone doesn't like to do this, but I like to have my weapon controller ready on the turret. Kind of like this. Uh, you can have it like one block under the turret. Of course, we have other stuff here, but you can have it like on the other side. So basically here. Uh, that works too, but I like to have them on the turret because it's easier to spawn them on ships. Right, so this thing is now connected. We should get back our HUD. Anyways, um, now we we'll go to our cram cannons and we're going to set up a little kind of interesting thing. The funny thing, which I think I forgot to tell you before, is that firing pieces, like for each barrel you want, you need a separate firing piece. And that separate firing piece needs its personal automatic um, no, personal packers. Personal packers. I can't speak anymore. Okay, so every every barrel you want need a personal firing piece because that's kind of a barrel start. And for each of the firing piece, they have to have personal packers. The packers, however, they can perfectly well share the pellets. They don't have to have personal pellets. So that's like a little cost-efficient thing you can know. Now we're going to make a real stupid turret here, which is a, combi a combined cram turret with a normal turret. And this is just because I want to show up. I want to show you how to build a cram cannon, like cram a cram cannon nowadays, and a normal turret in the same video because I'm lazy. Um, <clears throat> um, yes basically that and maybe you'll enjoy enjoy this kind of compact video as well so here we can see we can have a pellet here we can have a pellet there which means we can look 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 how beautiful so they, they can share pellets there they can share pellets there that's amazing all right so let's fill that up there and we're not going to make the best turret, but we're going to make a turret that's proper in all its tutorial intents and purposes. Okay. And we're going to... Okay, right. So now they can share some pellets there. Beautiful. They're going to share explosive pellets. They're kind of expensive and stuff. Like that. 
And this turret is going to have some... It's gonna be penetration. Well, it also, it's also gonna have penetration. But of course, this, this cannon won't get the penetration. This cannon... Oh, frag I meant. We, accident, we accidentally put frag on the other one. Whatever. Then this other one will be penetration. Beautiful. So we have a high explosive penetration and we have a high explosive frag shell. Beautiful. They need their own kind of personal uh, firing fusing boxes, I mean. So here we have a fusing box on this one and we have a fusing box on this one. Uh, this one is going to be... Uh, Why? Okay, we need to put the firing pieces before we can play around with these. Right, so this cannon will shoot forwards in that direction. This cannon will shoot upwards here. And, uh, well, this little cannon that's shooting upwards is of course going to be a mortar. And it's going to be like this little recoil suppressed mortar. So it's a little bit slower. Maybe even a little bit more recoil suppressed. Beautiful. And it's going to have the standard cram size. Beautiful. Um, mortars, they are best when they explode at low altitude. I think. So I want my mortar to detonate 8 meters underwater. 3 meters underwater. That means they will blow up beside, on or under ships, which is exactly what we want. Um, this one, however, which is kind of a normal cannon, <clears throat> um, this one should instead blow up when it's uh, time from launch. So 120 seconds. Uh, but of course we want a laser targeter so it will kind of detonate close to it. And it will detonate a little bit after. Like that. Right. So now what we want to have, like this is our kind of main cannon. We want it to be a little bit fatter like this, so <clears throat> we're gonna make the bucket wider, as you know, with that one. Uh, we're gonna have some heavy barrels just to make it a little bit sturdy, but we want it to move around too, so we're gonna add some of these, or we want it to move around faster, rather. It has the same angles it can move, it's just faster. And since we have already covered the azimuth movements, we only want up and down. We are going to add a couple of... Uh, no, that's the wrong barrel. Elevation barrels. We're going to add a couple of elevation barrels. So now we'll have kind of the max elevation here. And to increase the accuracy, we're going to throw, throw on a few more regular barrels. Beautiful. That's a big cannon. Right. Um, and the next step will be... Yes, this this little mortar cannon here, just so we can show that, we're going to be lazy. Um, this mortar cannon will have the potential to fire some heavier shells as well, if it can get its shot. So we're going to add these, uh, god damn it, the automatic, as I said, don't even try the automatic, just, just learned manual ones. And they are a little bit, like I know, they're a little bit weird to get a hang of. Thank you. Well, um, we want some payload compactors here so we have the potential to shoot real powerful shells. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's add some more explosives here so it won't be too slow. And since it wants to have the potential to be real powerful shells, what we want it to shoot as long as it can. Uh, so we're going to go into cram settings here and we're gonna set minimum packing to like 25% so it won't be like insane, you know? Um, and of course this is not like the max gauge and you know, <clears throat> anyways. 
this gun this one is going to be real accurate um, crams when they are firing in high arcs they will be kind of homing a little bit towards the target which is pretty nice um, but to make it sure it fires high we need to go into this setting here and we're going to select prefer high or only high and there we go this one however we're going to set as only low as it is already and oh lord I forgot this thing this one of course um, it can move around in all directions but it is a good idea since we already have a azimuth covered it's a good idea to have like at least one <coughs> uh, elevation barrel so it can move a little bit like this more than it can like this which is nice all right we're going to this one and we're going to set it to be uh, <clears throat> we're going to set it to be a little less accurate because I don't know why because you know I want to show the different settings beautiful uh, we have a lot of ammo boxes on this build here and of course you need ammo to supply this thing and if we go here we can set uh, that it won't attack targets that's higher than I don't know 500 meters up in the air because it probably won't be able to hit very well uh, so you can play around with that limitations and then we are going to there was one thing more I thought about let's see here stats da, da, da. and here we can see the stats by the way beautiful material cost total volume power, firepower all like that so you can kind of count how much uh, ammo it will use all right uh, and this one has very poor, very poor armor penetration capabilities. This one has 28. Beautiful. Okay, so... Yeah. And the nice, nice thing with this is that when we have on low altitude, it will explode beneath the target if it misses. But if it hits, it will detonate when we penetrated it a little bit so we're going to set that up actually penetration depth also so it either of these beautiful and we can set that a little lower just because we don't want it to activate first how nice you can also write in the values manually all right i think we are very ready to test our little turret here and if your turret has some kind of problems with it getting stuck you go to your turret block here, we can set the marker display here, and we're going to set, uh, we are going to set movement, movement, uh, no, come on. We're going to try and set up this. No, god damn it. Oh, this beautiful flip button, that's really helpful. Okay, right. We are helping this not getting stuck in the AI tower. Isn't that beautiful? So now we set it up and that's something you should do on the turret axis, not the cram firing piece. You can set it up in the cram firing piece, but that's kind of useless. Right, so there we are. God damn it. We're now going to be real quick with our controls here because this will be a little bit interesting. Let's spawn a marauder. And, oh god, our order, die. Thank you. Right. So now, our cram cannon should indeed start firing on the marauder. Do we have a hit? No, we do not. But we can see, we are trying to aim. Now, I don't really know why here, but it seems that one of, like, this local weapon controller can only uh, control one of these um, cram cannons right now. So we're just going to add a second one here so it can uh, also fire. So I don't know if that's a bug or if it's a feature. You never know with from that. 
Anyways, we can go into this one too and set the minimum packing size to like 72 to get a little bit faster fire, faster action. So, uh, now our cram pieces, they are flying up into space, but gravity will bring these beauties down and they will kind of home towards the target. <clears throat> so let us see the damage we're doing here. Oh, beautiful. You saw that? It just went... <laughs> it just went through and it exploded inside. It's kind of weak shells, but, you know... Um, they do hit very well. I mean, ah, a lot of people have real weak decks too, so this is a real nice, like, auxiliary cannon. You can see it exploded beneath uh, as well, so it would probably be a good idea to set it to explode a little bit more shallow. But of course, this is just a little tutorial to make you understand how to make stuff. Will our big bad cannon fire again? We are packing. Oh, we are reaching. We're reaching the sweet spot. But, uh, yeah. This kind of frag explosive shell is uh, probably a lot better against aircraft, to be honest. And the nice thing with the new fast cram cannons that they are 200 meters per second is that uh, it's much more viable to uh, have cram cannons as anti-air. Anyways, let us just fly down this little thing here and go to cram settings and set maximum muscle velocity to like 72. That's probably low. Will it even fire? I'm not sure it even can reach the target with that low. Let's set it to 120 then. <clears throat> And you can do this if you want the arcs to be much lower. Um, on the other hand, if you get lower arcs, like they will reach the target faster, but they will also get le They may get less time to actually home towards the target. But on this close distance, it's uh, fine to do this. But cram, cram mortars should generally be long-distance weapons, but yeah. Anyways, I think this kind of explains what you need to know about the new cram cannons, and I hope that this tutorial was helpful, and, you know, that it kind of is a nice little update to the other uh, cram cannon tutorials I've made. And, uh, well, if it did help you, please leave a like and of course, if you also want to, you can support the channel and stuff like that. But I do sincerely hope you do stay tuned and check out our coming videos as well. Anyways, have a great time. I hope you enjoyed it. I see you in the next video, I hope. And, uh, well, this is Jim Odeas from Total Notary Channel, signing out.